Thank you, Craig, and I'd like to thank RIIDC for their support of this uh, uh, session. Uh, it looks like the wrong presentation, but I hope it's right. Uh, so, how do I advance? So, uh, I'm going to start from the point of view of food security and what innovation can do there. And we've all heard about uh, population growth. The, the reality is that we're revising the figures upwards, probably because of the impact of the global uh, financial crisis. But the... How do I advance this? Back. So the, uh, the real issue, of course, is that we're eating more because of growing affluence, particularly uh, growing affluence in Asia. But the third factor, if I can get this to change, is that uh, we're changing to uh, eating uh, different food. So there's a change in global diet that's quite important. So uh, this is the wrong presentation, unfortunately. Uh, so what I was, I was wanting to, to look at is how well we're traveling in terms of innovation relative to uh, what our goals are. We've, we, we all understand that we need to double food production uh, in the first half of, of this century. Uh, and these bars represent what we'd need to do in these major commodities of, of maize, soybean, rice, and wheat. But unfortunately, uh, we can see that the blue is what we're actually achieving. So there's an innovation gap there between the productivity gains that we're making uh, and in things like rice and wheat, they're around about half of that uh, that would be required to meet uh, our outcome. So this represents a significant uh, gap in productivity that, that we really need innovation to deliver against. So... Uh, how should Australia respond to that in terms of innovation? Well, uh, uh, what, what we often see is that, uh, that there's a, a view that, that we need to produce cheap food for the world's poor. And in, in, in our uh, research, we're, we're working with organisations like the, the Gates Foundation to deliver drought-tolerant uh, sorghum for, for sub-Saharan Africa. And I think that's an appropriate way uh, for our innovation system to support uh, global food security. But when we come to the Australian farm, uh, my view is that uh, producing cheap food is not a viable business option in the Australian context. And really, our uh, business objective should be to produce expensive food, preferably very expensive food, for uh, pre predominantly Asian food consumers. And this strategy uh, is, is really quite important. So, uh, if we think about, uh, for a moment, uh, what our options are in innovation, they are, they are to uh, increase production, that's production efficiency, or to increase the value of the product. We really only have those two options, and we have to, cho have to look at the balance. Quite often in an industry, if we're doing one, we really need to focus on doing more of the other. Th then we really only have two options, to either change the, the nature of the plant or the animal, the genetics, or to change the production environment. And it's my argument that, that what we really need to be doing is producing better differentiated products and that our innovation system should be focused very much on that. Just producing more of the same is necessary but not sufficient uh, to deliver a successful agriculture for Australia. So we shouldn't be aiming to undercut imports with cheap production domestically. That really, to me, sounds like the car industry. We should be really looking to have a domestic industry that can match the high prices of discriminating Asian consumers because we produce such a small amount of food that we can really target all of it at high value niche markets in Asia. And wheat uh, is, is a particularly uh, good example of that, hopefully. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so we, in, in the case of wheat, many people think of this as a commodity and it is becoming, to some extent in Australia, more of a commodity. But uh, the, the reality is that we, we have, have in the past marketed Australian wheat as a niche product and we need to, to return to that focus. Uh, the niche that uh, I think uh, is a good example of that is the udon noodle wheat out of Western Australia. Here we have a one million tonne niche market. 
for a particular product where we can supply the world market uniquely. And I think the real opportunity and innovation for Australia is to think about all of our agricultural products uh, targeting higher value niche markets, uh, largely because uh, there's, there's uh, advantage in increasing the value rather than the, the volume of our production. Let's see if any chance I've got a slide. So another area that, that really is uh, a probably good example of where Australia can contribute is, is from, its, uh, from its biodiversity. Uh, we've just recently discovered new species of rice in northern Australia, and Australia probably represents the centre of diversity for rice, if not the centre of biological origin. And this creates uh, new opportunities for us to think about niche rice products, very high value rice products, but how we can contribute those uh, to world markets. And, 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 and as the technology is changing, we can say that Australia uh, now has genetic resources for a very large number of crops. The traditional view has been that Australia is not a source of novel uh, uh, genetics for agriculture, but the technology has changed. And what that means is that we now suddenly find we are the best source of, of rice and sorghum and cotton and soybean. And all of these crops that have come from somewhere else, but where it turns out that the, the really valuable genetic resources may lie here in Australia. So there's some real innovation opportunities, including opportunities to commercialise completely, completely new crops, which we should come to somewhere. Uh, the, so we've got great diversity in these, and, and we've got the opportunity to domesticate completely new crops Here's an example, uh, one we're calling Alpine Rice, a, a company that spun off from some of our work, uh, that will produce a, a domesticated Australian species to become uh, a substitute for rice. Uh, another example of uh, unique opportunity for Australia, really, I believe, is, is, is uh, and the positioning of Australia, is, is coffee. Coffee is uh, produced, of course, in the developing world and is a very high value, highly traded commodity. So what's the opportunity for Australia? I think it's only in very expensive coffee. Uh, so we're uh, working uh, with, a, with a company at the moment who has the ambition, I think the worthy ambition, of, of, of selling the world's most expensive coffee from Australia. And I think that's, that's an example of the sort of innovation that's needed uh, to position Australian agriculture for success. We're, we're never going to succeed in undercutting developing countries in producing coffee, but we have some unique uh, opportunities here to produce uh, high quality coffee and uh, we're looking at marketing this predominantly in Europe, so this is not a domestic uh, opportunity. If I can go on. Uh, we do have uh, wild coffees in Australia and one of, the, one of them we, we've just discovered has no caffeine. Some people think this is a fairly useless crop but uh, it is something that's, that shows the, the, the t opportunities that we have for, for completely uh, new products to be developed. We also have the impact of the DNA technology that we've heard about really impacting on horticultural crops. We've just uh, looked at the sequence of, of cherries and peaches and almonds, and from that we now can see opportunities to innovate completely new types of fruits and nuts that have attributes that really will discriminate them in the market. And that's really the imperative for Australian production, not to keep producing the same old products, but really to produce a product that will attract a premium from this discerning consumers. The macadamia is a good example. For a long time we thought that was Australia's only food, native food product. I think we've moved on from there. But, but uh, many countries are starting to produce macadamia. So if Australia is to retain an advantage there, we really need to reinvent the macadamia. So we're now looking at how we can select macadamias that have added nutritional attributes, that have uh, improved flavours and consumer attributes. If we keep just producing the same product, uh, we're not going to succeed. Here also we're looking at those step changes that have been talked about. We're looking at a tenfold increase in productivity of tree crops across the board for things like macadamias and mangoes and avocados. And we now think the technology is there to go for that tenfold increase in productivity per hectare and per unit of water. And unless we go for those sorts of productivity gains, we're not going to stay competitive. But the, the technology is there that, that should make that possible. I just wanted to say a little bit about uh, other agricultural products, uh, and particularly uh, energy from agriculture. Uh, we, uh, I think, understand the food issues. 
uh, the unique opportunities for Australia are posed, I think, by the economic uh, issue and the security issue. Uh, Australia is, is becoming more and more dependent on oil coming from the Middle East, and we have uh, a strong interest from the US. Uh, I've been uh, uh, in meetings with the, the US ambassador and many groups in the last few weeks about how Australia can play a more important strategic role in, in supporting the US military in the Western Pacific from independent energy sources. And that needs to be, at the moment, coming from agriculture, because our oil here in Australia is increasingly coming from the Middle East and wouldn't necessarily be available in a time of conflict. So the opportunities we have are, are very significant. Uh, we've been, uh, uh, of course, trialling biofuels and Australian helicopters uh, with the US military. Here's an Australian helicopter on a US aircraft carrier running on biofuels. We've got proof of uh, concept. The, uh, the US Navy is going to 50% biofuels by 2020, and I've just heard yesterday the Australian Navy is committed to the same. This creates some, some great new opportunities for Australian agriculture because there'll be market pool uh, for a product that will be able to be produced on a very large scale. And, and so uh, we, we do have the opportunity of, of being a major supplier here in Australia uh, to, to, the, to world industries in this regard. Uh, one of the, the innovations that I wanted to mention was the, the idea of, of, of introducing completely new industrial products. Here we have sections through sugarcane leaves and the, the yellow coloured component is, is plastic, polyhydroxybutyrate. Here we, we're up to 20% polyhydroxybutyrate in the, in the sugarcane leaf. So I believe we can start to roll out in northern Australia sugarcane crops that, that, that have uh, polyhydroxybutyrate, for example, in the leaves, worth more than the sugar, uh, still produce all of the sugar and take the residue of the crop to high value fuels and biomaterials uh, to, to fuel aircraft. So we're reinventing uh, these crops as industrial uh, products that, that we can uh, process through biofactories that we see as part of uh, agricultural development in, in northern Australia. And, and much of that is about uh, also using things like, like eucalypts. So I'll, I think uh, I'm going to, going to end there because I don't have the right slide set, but uh, thanks very much.